Hello, I'm not Chuck. Recently I resumed thinking about a weather station to put in my backyard and collect temperature, humidity, rainfall, and similar data. I knew I wanted it to be microprocessor controlled and battery operated, but I didn't want to have to routinely change the battery. So that means the battery needs to be rechargeable and I have to have a way to recharge it. A single 18650 cell will provide 3.7 volts DC, which is good for a lot of microcontrollers. This battery has a storage capacity large enough to provide power for a long operating time on a single charge, 3200 milliampere hours. 18650 cells are available up to about a 3500 milliampere hour rating. I know there are some that claim up to 10,000, but I'm very doubtful of those claims. This one is marked at 9,900 milliampere hours, but the actual capacity is only 1,500. However, regardless of capacity, all 18650 cells are the same physical size, 18 millimeters in diameter and 65 millimeters long and that's what I have chosen to power my weather station. Since my backyard has a good view of the southern sky, solar power seems like a good possibility as a recharging source. I already have this 10 watt 12 volt solar panel. As you can tell it's small, only 8 inches tall and 13 and a quarter inches wide. 10 watts should be plenty of power, so I looked on the web for a charge controller to go between the panel and the battery. In order to get an efficient system, I wanted an MPPT controller. That's maximum power point tracking. And I wanted something that wasn't too expensive. After a little research, I ordered this one from Amazon. While I waited for delivery, I spent some time researching the components and soon located the data sheet this is it for the CN3791 integrated circuit. It's nowhere near as large as most integrated circuit data sheets, but it told me a lot that I was interested to learn. For example, it stated that the solar controller's input voltage should be set at the nominal output voltage of the solar panel being used. That reassured me because the Amazon listing had indicated that the PCB that I ordered was set for a 12 volt input. The data sheet went on to say that the input voltage was determined by a voltage divider connected to pin 6 of the CN3791IC. Using my digital multimeter, I found that surface mount resistors R1 and R2 form the voltage divider. Here's a greatly enlarged photograph of the board. R1 is connected to the input from the solar panel, R2 is connected to ground, and the junction of R1 and R2 is connected to pin 6 of the CN3791, which is the MPPT pin. However, it turned out to be a bit more complicated than just a simple voltage divider. Fortunately, the CN3791 datasheet included a formula for calculating the value of R1 and R2. V equals 1.205 times 1 plus R1 divided by R2. That's where V is the solar panel voltage at which the CN3791 will begin passing full charge power to the 18650 battery. Now if you're paying close attention you will note that the schematic showing the formula in the data sheet uses R3 and R4, while the formula that I showed uses R1 and R2. Don't let this throw you. The discrepancy is simply a notation difference between the uh, reference numbers on the data sheet and those on the PCB. R3 on the data sheet is R1 on the PCB, and R4 on the data sheet is R2 on the PCB. Of course, I immediately wanted to find the values of R1 and R2 on the PCB. I bought from Amazon and check if my board was set for a 12 volt input. But because the resistors are surface mount devices, there are no color codes on them. 
Insta, they have a three-digit alphanumeric code. As you can see on the charger board I bought, R1 is labeled 25D and R2 is labeled 223. Using the calculator at HobbyHour.com, I concluded that R1 is 178,000 ohms and R2 is 22,000 ohms. Plugging those values into the formula yielded the value of V to be 10.95 volts, not as close to the 12 volts as I was hoping. But what to do? As usual, I turned back to the internet and looked for pictures of the CN3791 PCB like the one I had, and I tried to read the values of R1 and R2. Here's the summary of what a lot of searching and squinting yielded. Most of the photos where I could read the resistor value showed R1 with the same 178K resistance as mine, but I found one that had R2 labeled as 30C, which translated to 20,000 ohms. Running that value through the formula gave a much better value for V. 11.93 volts was good to connect to my nominal 12-volt solar panel. I don't have a good explanation for why the manufacturer used a 22K resistor when a 20K resistor yields a better result in the formula. It could be as simple as a bill of materials error in the Chinese factories. But I believe it was an intentional manufacturing compromise to allow the same value of R2 to suffice for both 12 volt and 9 volt panels. Regardless of the reason, I changed R2 on my PCB from 22K to 20K to achieve a better match with my 12 volt solar panel. In case you want to adjust the input voltage of your CN3791 board, here's a table that shows the values of R2 needed for 12, 9, 6, and 5 volt panels. I have also included the DigiKey part number for each resistor value. Note that in every case, R1 remains at 178,000 ohms. The high resistance values for R1 and R2 ensure a low current drain through the voltage divider. My plan for the weather station is to use an ESP32 microcontroller that runs on a range from 2.6 to 3.6 volts. The more I thought about the output from a single 18650 battery, ranging from 4.2 volts down to 3.2 volts, depending on the level of charge, the more I realized that a voltage regulator circuit was needed. Here is one I bought on eBay. It uses an AMS 1117-3.3 integrated circuit. Even though they aren't as efficient as digital regulators, I prefer linear regulators because they produce less electrical noise and are less likely to cause problems with the microcontroller circuits. But there is another problem. The dropout voltage on the AMS 1117-3.3 is 1.3 volts max, which means I need at least 4.6 volts input to be sure that the output is 3.3 volts less than 4.6 volts in, and the output level is unpredictable. And with only one 18650 battery, I know the battery voltage will be only 4.2 volts max at full charge, so that probably won't work. Of course, using two 18650 batteries in series will double the output voltage, which solves one problem, but it creates a different one. The CN3791 battery charger has a maximum output of only 4.2 volts, but two 18650 batteries in series needs a charging voltage of 8.4 volts. Fortunately, there is an easy solution, another integrated circuit from the same company that makes the CN3791. It can easily handle two 18650 batteries in series. It's the CN3795. Here's a PCB using that IC at a reasonable price. So I ordered one of those. When it came in, I checked to see if it was set up to use a 12 volt solar panel, but right there on the back, nine volts was checked. Of course, me being the doubter that I am, I proceeded to check the resistor voltage divider values. 
The formula is the same for the CN3795 as for the CN3791, except for a change in the resistor reference numbers to R5 and R6. The board I bought had a 16K resistor installed as R5 and a 2.49K as R6, which set the MPPT to 8.95 volts. So I changed R5 to 22.1K because my solar panel is 12 volts nominal output, and a 22.1K resistor sets the MPPT to 11.91 volts. In case you want to adjust the input voltage of your CN3795 PCB, here's a table that shows the values of R5 needed for 18, 12, and 9 volt solar panels. I've also included the DigiKey part number for each resistor value. Note that in every case, R6 remains at 2.49K ohms. With the solar charger selected, I turned my attention to the rest of the design. Another advantage of using two 18650 batteries in series is that they will accommodate a 5 volt microcontroller and a huge number of 5 volt compatible peripherals. All I need is a 5 volt regulator circuit. Fortunately, the AMS 1117-5 is available in just such a circuit. It uses the same footprint and pinout as its 3.3 volt cousin. So, where does that leave the design? Well, here's a breadboard solution. The output from the solar panel connects to the input of the CN3795 solar charge controller via the green wire on the left. The batteries connect to the output of the solar charge controller and to the inputs of the two voltage regulators via the red wires. The output of the 5 volt regulator is on the white wire and the output of the 3.3 volt regulator is on the yellow wire, both on the right side of the solderless breadboard. By the way, if you decide to use a CN3795 solar charge controller, you may want to change out some of the voltage divider resistors. Even though surface mount resistors are really cheap, the shipping cost will run the total up considerably, unless you have some other purchases to make that shipping cost justifiable. However, because I'm a nice guy, I will give you a resistor or two for free. First, send an email to my address shown in the About section on my YouTube homepage. I'll respond to you with my U.S. Postal Service mailing address. Then you can send me a SASE, that's a self-addressed stamped envelope. Be sure and put that first class stamp stuck right up in the corner. I have some of all of the resistors shown in the table. Just pick out the values you need, tell me, and I will get them in the mail to you in a day or two. Well, that's enough for today. Please like the video, comment on it, and subscribe to my channel. Oh, and there's one other thing. Remember, I'm not Chuck.